Shalom. Welcome once again to the Friday Echad Hour. My name is Rabbi Philip Sharp and um, I'm in the UK this week making this recording for you. And um, looking forward to sharing uh, my heart on the subject of covenant and friendship and the ethos of relationships in Messiah, in Moshiach, uh, and in Yahuwah, our God. We are looking at, so what do we call this message? We call this message covenant relationships, uh, because that is really the sum total of what the Torah and the Tanakh is about. The whole Bible is about covenant relationships. And we know that the initial relationship is, of course, with Yahuwah himself. And what we find in life, absolutely for sure, that any issues or problems that we have in our relationships with each other, our spouses, our children, uh, our friends, uh, for sure, as eggs are eggs, the problem begins with us and with Yahweh, that we have something wrong with him, in that we have an attitude in our heart. And uh, there's a scripture that, that says that we are to keep captive every thought that raises itself up above the knowledge of Yahweh. Um, now, that's... A massive thing to seek to achieve a massive thing to control um, and I I believe that many 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 aspects of our walk with Yahuwah can only be achieved through covenant and understanding covenant we know that in Hebrew the word covenant barit uh, uh, means as well as covenant it means to cut so there is something in uh, making covenant that has to do with swearing to your own hurt and cutting and what I would like to make as clear as I can uh, this evening is to give us a clearer understanding of the fact that everything that Yahweh does is in accordance with his covenant with us and uh, we uh, are subject to that covenant in its blessings and in its cursings <coughs> uh, in its promises and in its fait accompli. Now, uh, right at the very beginning, uh, Yahuwah made a covenant with Adam and Hava in the Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden. Uh, now, the, the Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, Eden in Hebrew meaning uh, pleasure, the Garden of Pleasures. Uh, and this ties up with the scripture that there are treasures and pleasures at his right hand forever and uh, Yahuwah's right hand is a, a very significant study in itself but because we know that Yeshua when he overcame he sat at the right hand of Yahuwah of the Father and uh, he then says in Revelation the book of Revelation to us that he who overcomes I will give the right to sit on my throne just as I overcame and sat on my father's throne. So the, the right hand is where the treasures and pleasures of Yahuwah are. And it's through the overcoming of our sin through, in and by the understanding of covenant that we come into uh, those treasures and those pleasures. And by no other means. Um, and 
we are told that my people are destroyed through their lack of knowledge and we also we also see in psalm 25 that the that the secret of the lord is with those who fear him and he reveals to them his covenant so we need revelation which is knowledge of the covenant that yahuwah has made with us uh, we need it deeply in our hearts and we need to live by it to understand it and for it to become wonderfully effect effective in our lives now when yahuwah made the gun eden he put man he put man my, mankind adam and Chava, he put them into the the garden and he made a covenant with them saying that you can enjoy all the fruit of the garden but you cannot eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and uh, that was the covenant those were the rules for the the garden and those that was the covenant and and it was a very simple covenant which we know that they broke and we being in them we broke it so that was a covenant they broke now immediately we see after this covenant is broken that the angel <coughs> it drives them out of the gun eden um, so that they would not eat of the tree of knowledge of uh, that they would not eat of the tree of life and then live forever in their sin and the way back uh, is key and uh, and the way back would be via covenant also so we know that the uh, next covenant is made uh, with noah uh, and his family and the covenant is um, ratified so to speak with the um, noahide laws given the basic laws that Noah and his family were to live by and the seal of the covenant the sign of the covenant uh, is the rainbow so Noah was chosen because he was blameless in the sight of the Lord the only man in the world that uh, was blameless and this is already a pattern that emerges with Noah that Yahuwah is prepared to if in extreme circumstances where people have so turned to their own way of thinking and turned away from covenant that Yahweh is prepared to um, begin again with a family that has found favor in his sight we read the Psalms and often it says that there were none righteous there was nobody that he could make a covenant with Yahuwah can only operate by covenant and therefore the righteousness of a man's heart uh, will depict how deep the covenant is how true the covenant is and being blameless in the sight of the Lord is pretty close Okay, so the, the next main patriarch, of course, is uh, Avram, who became Avraham. And that uh, Yahuwah declared that through him all the nations of the world would be blessed. And that it says in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 26, it says that Avraham walked in all of the ways of the Torah. In all his laws and all his statutes and all his decrees Yahuwah's decrees and thereby he was blameless in the sight of Yahuwah and Yahuwah kept his side of the covenant and declared to Abraham many many things that are mysterious uh, in certain scriptures we know that Yeshua said that before Abraham was I am he also said that our father Abraham longed to see my day. So Abraham obviously had great knowledge of the redeeming 
covenant um, uh, way that he would open up to the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that if you believe in him, you would have eternal life and you wouldn't perish. That is covenant. That is covenant. Washing each other's feet is covenant. Laying down your life for your wife is covenant. Laying down our lives for each other is covenant. Learning the ways to do that are to, first of all, to love Yahweh. To learn how to do that uh, is, as Yeshua said, if you love me, you will obey me. And it's through the obedience of the commandments that we begin to cut this covenant relationship with Yahuwah. And it uh, progresses as it did with Avraham. Yahuwah made, makes the covenant with Avraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov based on the principle of the need for three witnesses to establish the pattern and the principle and of course the covenant itself and then of course uh, we see that Abraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov are established Yaakov has 12 sons who are the 12 sons whose names are the, the, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel the number 12 is the number of perfect government uh, and I believe that's the reason why Yahuwah chose 12 tribes. So we know that the after uh, Yaakov uh, went to Egypt, Joseph was there. We know the story of Joseph and we know the story of the exodus from Egypt that God, Yahuwah, rose up Moshe Rabbeinu, who was the most humble man in all of the earth. And somehow Yahuwah had created such a man that he could be trained in all of Torah and we know that when he went the up the mountain in Sinai that he was able to hear the whole Torah uh, very significantly very deeply he received it and then came back down to give it to the people so this was a man who could truly hear Shema um, Yahuwah to be able to walk uh, uprightly uh, and in covenant so um, Yahuwah renews the covenant at Mount Sinai we know that the children of Israel came out of Egypt it's believed that only one fifth of the nation of Israel actually came out and the rest of the people were Egyptians who came out believing in the God of Israel and came out and followed Moses. They came to Mount Sinai where Yahuwah had gone before them to prepare this meeting with them to make covenant. And we see that the book of Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy, is really laid out as a ketubah. It's really laid out as a marriage contract between Yahuwah and his people um, but of course it is immensely prophetic of what would happen what wouldn't happen how it would happen the blessings and the cursings but how in the end this covenant would come to pass and we see in the book of Revelation that they sang the song of Moses and they sang the song of the Lamb so this incredible covenant is to establish a people set apart for Yahuwah. And cutting the covenant is through the circumcision of heart. And um, we see that uh, in Moses' day, uh, people as they are today, they misunderstand, misinterpret misjudge uh, what the covenant is and the covenant of course is love love is the covenant he who loves is born of Yahuwah 
He who loves not knows not Yahuwah because Yahuwah is love. Now, I'd like to give a description of a personal insight into what covenant is. Covenant is not just based on words. It's based on deeds, actions, and relation, deep relationships. Uh, it is um, a defined understanding of love toward each other that is in accordance with covenant. Covenant is that whatever you have, I have called upon, and whatever I have, you have called upon, depending on the need. Uh, so, for example, if we are uh, accept that we are in covenant relationship, I need five thousand pounds for an operation. I'm going to die without it. You have ten thousand pounds in the bank. Uh, in covenant relationship, you are obligated, truly obligated under Yahweh, to give those funds over to save life uh, or, 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 or an emergency situation that is less crucial in a covenant relationship. If your money is called upon, your time is called upon, your assistance is called upon, whether that means um, uh, coming home from a holiday or whatever it is, uh, a covenant relationship is a very, a very deep commitment to obeying the commandments of Yahuwah toward each other. We're told in the Tanakh that the sons of Yahuwah are led by the Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the, the Ruach of Yahuwah. And when once we've made a true covenant relationship, then uh, we find that we are led by the Spirit. We see that when somebody like uh, Pinchas in the Torah did a true deed of righteousness, that it says that Yahuwah made with him a covenant of peace, a covenant of peace, that somehow his act of righteousness so uh, um, stood up for Torah that Yahuwah reached out and made a covenant of peace with him. This is a, a relational a relational factor. Okay, so um, I would like to, I, I want to try to uh, explain who the best people are to make covenant with and how you and I can make ourselves the best people to uh, be able others others to make covenant with us and for us to also be able to discern who to make covenant with it's particularly important that if you if we do make genuine and earnest covenant that it is clearly understood by each party uh, unfortunately many people make oaths vows make covenant with people and then fall away this is always a risk. There are great risk factors involved uh, in making covenant. If you want the safeguard of, of legal documents and the safeguard of, uh, of making it um, legal under the law of the land, um, th that's possible that you can do that. It is possible that you can do that, but in the true law of covenant, you don't need that. Um, and some may disagree with me, but uh, if our hearts are truly circumcised, um, the, 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 the scripture says that that love, when, our, when we're truly walking in love, there, there is no law against that. Um, and therefore, righteousness uh, becomes higher than any piece of paper. Um, now, when people want to twist things and, and run away and break covenant, um, 
you know, that's another story which which we'll try to look at. But what I'd like to do is look at the positive side first. And I want to use a scripture that Yeshua uh, said on the, uh, the the time of the Beatitudes when he said, Blessed are the poor in heart, or blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of Yahuwah. So I believe very strongly that being poor is a massive part of uh, being in true covenant. Yeshua said to some people, he said, sell everything you have, uh, give it to the poor, and come and follow me, and store up treasures for yourself in heaven. Now, I personally believe that if we have money, then we need to be using it in accordance with covenant relationship uh, so that we are using that money to store up treasures for ourselves in heaven. Uh, we need to uh, be content with whatever Yahuwah has given us. We don't really need a lot. We don't need fancy cars. We don't need fancy airplanes. We don't need uh, fancy uh, holidays, etc. If our hearts are really uh, in tune and wanting Yahuwah. We don't need those things. Um, and I'm not saying that Yahuwah doesn't want us to have any luxuries. I'm not saying he doesn't want us to enjoy life. Uh, I'm not saying that. I, I haven't got a problem with that at all. But what I am saying is that if our hearts are really fixed on our treasure being in heaven, then there are so many millions of people out in this world who are dying every day because they don't even have clean water, uh, then there's something wrong if we're buying uh, flash cars and uh, etc. Um, and some of you may not agree with that, but that's okay too. So blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom. Now that uh, word is reiterated a number of times in Scripture. That um, Isaiah says that Yahuwah has ordained perfect praise in children. And children it's the it's the poorness of children that Yahuwah is really talking about. They children do not own anything, they do not uh, have anything, they do not need anything, they do not seek anything. I mean some sweets and stuff for sure, but uh, what I'm saying is there's a there's a poorness of heart there and theirs is the kingdom. And so I believe the poorness, a true balanced view of what the poorness is that uh, Yahuwah is talking about is a kind of a poorness where you don't need to have riches to uh, supplement your low self-esteem. You don't have to have riches to therefore make you look good, to appease your ego so that you can uh, drive down the road and, and you're wanting people to say, wow, who's that? Uh, poorness of heart is that you you don't need people's praise. Uh, the scripture says that the fear of man brings a snare, brings a trap. And we do not uh, uh, need uh, traps in the kingdom. So, uh, for sure, we need to walk in the fear of Yahuwah. It is, as I said earlier, Psalm 25, the, it's the fear of Yahuwah that causes him to reveal his covenant. And when Yahuwah makes covenant, he gives us privileges that we understand. And the thing is, is that uh, Yahuwah is a, uh, a God of the whole heart. And he wants us to, to give him our hearts in covenant. And once we have done that, we cannot live by anything else. And that's why it says that we should meditate upon the Torah day and night. We should talk about it when we walk down the way, when we rise up, when we go to bed. We should teach it diligently to our children. Um, the, the commandments are very clear that Yahuwah wants a wholehearted 
uh, safeguarding of the Torah into our own lives and then safeguarding it that it's kept by our children and uh, hopefully rippling out from there. Now, through the understanding of the covenant with Yahuwah, we grow to understand his plans for the world. We understand through the feasts of Yahweh, they are his feasts. In keeping them, we grow to learn to understand the times and seasons of Yahuwah, what they mean in studying Torah and studying Torah in the feasts, we, we, we grow um, in that knowledge. And Yahuwah clearly wants us to grow in knowledge all the time because he who knows his God shall do great exploits. And because it is in the covenant with Yahuwah as that is cultivated that we can do what Yeshua said that we should do, that what we bind in heaven is bound on earth, what we loose in heaven is loosed on earth. Wherever two or three agree or touch upon anything, it shall be done. That if you ask anything in my name and in, and in accordance with the will of Yahuwah, it shall be done. Now those are people who understand the covenant. They understand what's been done for us uh, by, by Yahuwah. And we have given ourselves over. Our hearts have been softened. And that we've given ourselves over in softness to be able to be poor in spirit, to be able to be childlike, to receive and accept the covenant uh, in truth. And that enables us to do great exploits. And uh, this is something that we don't see a lot of today. And I believe it's mainly because the covenant has been changed and it says that it's an antichrist thing to do to change uh, times seasons and laws because by doing so you are actually making none and void the covenant now we know that Yeshua shed his blood he said at the last supper which was a Passover Seder he said that uh, he took the third cup, which was a traditionally warmed cup signifying blood. He said this is the blood of the Barit Hadashah, the renewed covenant. The renewed covenant. Now, we know that the only reference to that in scripture is Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, where it says, uh, and I will make a renewed covenant. The word there, Hadash can mean new or renew. Uh, that, and, and as Yahuwah does not have plan A and B, he only plans plan A. So he only ever renews his covenant. He doesn't make it brand new uh, to, make the, to make all his other teaching none and void. So <clears throat> the new covenant is a covenant that is brought about through blood. Uh, and it's brought about through the blood of the Messiah Yeshua ben David. So uh, through, but it's made with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So that's all 12 tribes. And the covenant between Yahuwah and the 12 tribes is the covenant that uh the 12 tribes are called to minister to all the nations that all of the nations make covenant with Israel so that the world lives in peace. It is the calling of the firstborn son, which is Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn, uh, the scriptures say, and it is the calling of the firstborn to proclaim this covenant to the ends of the earth that all the nations are part of the commonwealth of Israel. Now we know part of the covenant with Israel is Shabbat. Shabbat is a sign and a covenant. It is not only a day of the week, it is a day of covenant. 
And in that day of covenant, uh, there are promises for those who keep Shabbat. Uh, if we read Yeshayahu uh, chapter 58, uh, if you read Yeshayahu chapter 56, uh, there are many portions of scripture that indicate that Shabbat is a covenant that if we keep it, Yahuwah will exalt us and cause us to ride on the high hills of Yaakov, is one of the statements in Isaiah 58. So Shabbat is a covenant. The Torah itself is a covenant. And the ethos and the basis of all covenant is that we keep it safeguarded in our hearts, that by it we love Yahuwah and we love our neighbor as ourself. Now we know that when the armies of Israel went out to war, the Torah states, before you make war against the nation, offer them the terms of peace. Now the terms of peace were that that nation would serve Israel. And if they don't, then Yahuwah would give them the strategy to follow that he would bring down that nation that they would take their cities and plunder if Yahuwah decided to give them that. But the essence of the bridge was to make covenant with those people. Now, the covenant was based on the fact that that nation would serve Israel, uh, but by doing so, they would be, of course, serving themselves in any case by doing that. But the main purpose of making covenant relationship is that we no longer think our own thoughts because covenant is based upon the thoughts of Yahuwah. We know that in the book of Genesis that Yahuwah was, he regretted making the earth because it says that the sins of men were that they thought their own thoughts all the time. So they had departed from any true covenant that was based on the love of Yahuwah and they walked in their own thinking. They walked in their own ways. Now, the only way that Yahuwah can release his power is through people who are walking in his ways because that's what it is to keep covenant. You, if you keep covenant with Yahuwah, then we are in agreement with him and we walk with him and then his will is done through us. And the plan of the scriptures is that through this incredible covenant that Yahuwah has with his people, he will do two things. He will either make covenant. I mean, the final goal is that Israel makes covenant with all the nations and they live in peace. But uh, up until that happens, the same thing applies that the nations that will not make peace with Israel have chosen their own way thereby because Israel is Yahuwah's chosen covenant vessel to himself and to the world. They are the firstborn son. So uh, if any nation has their own mind on things and chooses not to come into covenant and therefore chooses not to follow Torah and they have their own way of doing, them, doing, doing things, it is the same old thing that is repeated and repeated and repeated in the scriptures, why judgment comes. Judgment comes because men think their own thoughts. We know that the Tower of Babel was diametrically opposed to covenant with Yahuwah. It was all about taking over the heavens, taking over the control of the heavens through the building of this, this mystical tower and taking over control of the earth and the rebellion was such that Yahuwah smote the people with Babel. And uh, we know that in the age that we live today, English, the language English, has become the international tongue. And so that all the nations um, have this international tongue. And that will be used 
to formulate a unity that is against Yahuwah, diametrically opposed to Yahuwah, uh, to rebuild the Tower of Babel uh, in a one world order to unite against Yahuwah. That's what it's about. This is a, a battle between heaven and hell and, uh, uh, and a battle against Hasatan and, and Yahweh. So those who make deeper covenant with Hasatan uh, are those who think their own thoughts all the time. Yahuwah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the more that we fear Yahuwah and repent of the hardnesses of our hearts that create the unbelief and the violence and the the, the issues of our hearts that make us turn away and think our own thoughts, which are very damaging to ourselves and everybody else. Uh, as we as we break that up, we, 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 we become more a son of Yahweh. If we don't, we become more a son of Hasatan. So either way, we're making a covenant, either with the enemy or with Yahuwah. Uh, we know that the sons... Of Yahuwah are led by the spirit of Yahuwah, so they do the things of Yahuwah. We know that Yeshua said, everything that I do, I see my father before me and I follow in obedience. Because he was in perfect covenant, perfect alignment. Uh, and it's working out that covenant is should be going on within our communities. Uh, that if you have a family uh, together... What are you doing to get peace in your family, to get unity in your family, to to have a happy family, a peaceful family, a prosperous family? You do so by working out the covenant with each other, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth within each other's lives, uh, laying down your life for each other. And that is the sign of a good family, a good family that is in harmony, that understands the quietness of Yahuwah, understands the peace of Yahuwah. Uh, for these, all of these things are found in cultivating righteous living, that we cultivate a covenant. And uh, if we understood more and more that Shabbat is a covenant, then we, the deeper we, we, and the way to understand that Shabbat is a covenant is to fear Yahweh more. The fear of Yahweh is a spirit. It's one of the seven spirits of Yahuwah. So we need to be asking, Father, give me please more fear of you, that I might walk in your covenant, that you would reveal more covenant to me. So if we want more understanding of the covenant, then we must fear Yahuwah more and therefore we must ask because sometimes we're very ignorant of even understanding what the fear of Yahuwah is. So um, the more that uh, Yeshua said, and this is a promise in the scriptures that is uh, not often preached, that someone who truly is seeking to live a righteous life, they will be persecuted. It's not a but or an if, they will be. So that's a promise none of us really like, but it's a fact that when we stand up for righteousness, then we will be persecuted somewhere because men love darkness. And uh, they do not, do not understand that uh, there is a covenant uh, with Yahuwah and his people, uh, and, and they are extremely hard, and they will not turn. But it's interesting that Yeshua did say, that if he would be lifted up, and obviously he means in truth, then he would draw all men unto himself. And so this indicates that the true nation of Israel, when they are truly keeping covenant, they will lift up their head, that is Yeshua. And by doing so, he will draw all men unto himself. And this is, I believe, part and parcel of the end time incredible uh, Hebrew revival that goes around the world and is we see the ingathering of the 12 tribes of Israel 
which uh, uh, you know I don't think we're far from. Um, I think we've got some war to go through before that happens. But the issue is, is that Yahuwah will keep his covenant with Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. He will keep his covenant that he renewed through Moses. He will keep his covenant that he renewed again through the Messiah, Yeshua. He will keep his covenant with David. So he makes covenant. He he he. He says something and he will keep it. He say, he made a covenant with David saying there will be somebody uh, of your tribe sitting on the throne of Israel forever. <coughs> and uh, the, these are all part and parcel. He particularly makes covenant with those who are wholehearted. The patriarchs we see, they were men after his own heart. They showed that in their lives. And thus proved that Yahuwah is a covenant-keeping God. So where does that leave you? Where does that leave me? It leaves us in cultivating covenant. If you're in covenant relationship, you are fearful not to fall out with people. Not because you're afraid of them, but because you're afraid of Yahuwah, sometimes it's better to allow yourself, even though you're right, to appear wrong. Because you, in the proverb, it says that he who repeats a matter divides friends, but he who covers a matter seeks love. And that's what the covenant is, is love. It says that love never fails. And if love is there for the covenant, we need to be returning constantly to a place of renting our heart before Yahuwah to make sure we are keeping the covenant because that is pleasing in his sight. Now, motives are a massive thing. The proverb says that to man belong the plans of the heart but Yahuwah judges the motive. Our hearts being judged test us to whether we are in true covenant or not. Now we make many mistakes and forgiveness is there. Yahuwah doesn't expect us to be holy overnight. Uh, and we're going to make mistakes and we're being trained. But if we're constantly seeking to hit the mark, which is what the word Torah comes from, comes from the word Yagah, which means to hit the mark, uh, then uh, we need to understand covenant and what it is to keep covenant. Uh, remember that when we enter the gates of heaven, uh, that some he will say, you did this in my name, you did that in my name, but depart from me, for I never knew you. Others he will say, welcome my good and faithful servant. And there is none more faithful than those who, in their own life, swear to their own hurt that they keep covenant. They keep the covenant, that they do not break covenant. Now, some men, when we see, we see with Yahuwah himself, that he has never broken covenant with Israel. Israel broke covenant with him. And they went after other gods. They gave themselves to whoredom. But we see that Yahuwah never actually uh, broke the covenant. He always kept it. He still keeps it. And in, even in the covenant that he made in the five books of Moses, he iterated there that when all these blessings have come upon you and when all these cursings have come upon you, then I will renew you even again. So the promise of the renewing of covenant is part of the covenant. And we need to see and understand that uh, the Torah is not a book of ifs and buts. It's a book of definites if we keep to covenant. And that means that we do what we do in the fear of Yahweh. Now, Again, we must remember particularly that the covenant is especially established within the home. But 
Uh, and it's but it's then a question of uh, if we then extend covenant outside of the home to others, obviously to others' homes, then the basis and the understanding of the covenant uh, needs to be established. And one of the ways that we can see whether uh, someone is of true covenant is by the quality of their family. Uh, by the attitudes, by body language, by by just general life, if we can see that these people are seeking to live with fruit in their lives, the fruitfulness of seeking to live a righteous life under Yahuwah, then we will know if if, if you, someone who is genuine should be pretty good at finding someone else who is genuine. And by finding someone else who is genuine, then you work out whether, in fact, you can make covenant uh, with them or not. And if you do make covenant with them, you make that covenant in the fear of Yahweh, which means that if if if, if he sees... I want to give you an example here because, you know, if if uh, if if anyone in in my family broke Shabbat, uh, this Shabbat, and they 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 went out and and did a job or, or or something, then I very much doubt that Yahuwah will do anything about it. But when the whole nation comes together and they are keeping Shabbat, as we see in in the scriptures. And then just one family decide, you know what, I'm not going to keep it. They break the covenant of Shabbat, and Yahuwah killed those, killed that man. Now that's because they, again, they they lent to their own understanding and rebelled against it. And the holier the nation is, then the more severe the punishment is, if the covenant is broken. So as we establish more and more covenant between us, then more is expected of us. And if we just one day decide we're going to go against this when the whole nation or let's say we've covenanted with other families and somebody starts to break that covenant, then Yahuwah himself will uh, come and judge. And I, I believe that's a very important thing that we we're told in the scriptures to leave room for Yahuwah's vengeance and i believe that's part of covenant if we're in true covenant relationship with yahuwah then we're not leaning to our own understanding we're trusting him and to stand back and allow yahuwah to judge rather than ourselves can be a very powerful thing because he does a much better job than we could ever do and I believe that's that's part of covenant too. If we're covenant with, if we're truly in covenant with Yahuwah, we are not taking vengeance ourselves in things. Now, personally, I, I believe that the twelve tribes of Israel will be restored in and by covenant. Now, what I must iterate here that the restoration of the twelve tribes of Israel in covenant will be covenant that is made in the fear of Yahweh. It's made in such a way that it's deeply heartfelt and to go against it uh, is, is, is to fall into the hands of the Almighty. So uh, it's a pretty scary prospect unless you truly mean that, uh, that, that you want covenant. The promises uh, surrounding the restoration of the 12 tribes of Israel are that he will put true shepherds, shepherds after his own heart over the 12 tribes. Uh, and this again indicates that the motives of the shepherd's heart is to glorify Yeshua, to lift him up. So therefore he draws all men unto himself. We see in the book of Micah very clearly that Judah, well, in Zechariah, it says Judah bends uh, her bow and fires Ephraim into the nations. Uh, the book of uh, the book of uh, Micah uh, clearly states. It says there that um, 
the that that Ephraim shall be amongst the Gentiles, and as as a as a as a roaring lion, or as a as a lion that waits for no man, and um, we see this incredible <coughs> boldness uh, that 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 is in the men of Israel bringing the true gospel of the kingdom, the Torah. Uh, made flesh in Messiah Yeshua to the nations and the whole world starts to turn to him. We see this revival uh, that is just absolutely incredible. And uh, we know that it's Jewish. We know it's Hebrew. We, we, we see that very clearly from the scriptures of the falling away of them means salvation to the Gentiles. Paul says, what shall it mean when they come to faith, but life from the dead? So, we also know that Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah was called, Jeremiah chapter 15, he was called there to separate the precious from the vile, to separate the precious from the vile. Yeshua said, um, if you want to take the speck out of someone else's eye, then first remove the log from your own. So cultivating our own covenant will help us to discern true believers and false believers. We're told in the scriptures about the tares and the wheat growing up together. And in the end of the age, the angels will come and cut down both the wheat and the tares and separate then the wheat and the tares. And this is what's going to happen. That the men of Yahuwah are going to be greatly assisted by the angels to separate the precious from the vile so that uh, the righteous can stand out and the sinners can stand out or the, or the wicked can stand out. And it's made very clear who is in covenant and who is a false believer, because the Psalms speak of those who pretend submission to Yahweh, but they don't really mean it. We see in Isaiah 32, it says, uh, no longer will the miser be called generous uh, and, and uh, we, we see a new genuineness coming into the world through the righteous uh, people of Yahuwah. And these people, they understand covenant. Now, this is also depicted in the scriptures where it says that when Jerusalem is established and uh, it says that the rebellious will not even be allowed through the gates of Jerusalem, such will be the fear of Yahuwah uh, within the gates, the people within the gates will just be able to see, say, sorry, bud, but you can't come in. You just ain't there. Now, this is not because anyone's better than anyone. This is to safeguard the Torah, to safeguard the name of Yahuwah, uh, because we're in covenant. And uh, I, I, I wish there was a way that I could just get pennies to drop in everyone's heart when it comes to covenant. But I, I, I think, you know, it's... We, we need to understand what covenant, it's like getting married. It's, it's truly what it is. Uh, now, when you get married to your wife, it's one kind of covenant. If you're part of the body of Messiah in truth, that is also covenant. And I, I personally believe that the restoration of the 12 tribes of Israel is by covenant. I believe the restoration of the world is by covenant. Uh, covenant has an order. Covenant is the Torah, rightly divided and understood. So every single aspect of Torah has to do with covenant. Covenant has to do with relationship. The goal of our faith is to have fellowship. That's the goal of our faith. The goal of our faith is not to be a famous rabbi or a famous evangelist or a famous something. Uh, the goal of our faith is is to learn to have the innocence restored that we keep covenant. And in that keeping of covenant, there is a purity. There is the ability to have fellowship. Now, many of us don't have the ability to have fellowship. We're too afraid or we're too hard uh, and we don't know how to um, have just to be normal, how to relax. Uh, because we, we, we've always got to we've always got to be one way or another to control the relationship or something like that. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's issues there, but you know if we return to true covenant relationships, 
uh, and we understood them, then we would be to each other what each other needs in, in being fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters. Because the antidote for the lonely and the antidote for the oppressed is that Yahuwah sets the lonely into families. And the last week's teaching, as I gave from Yeshayahu, Isaiah 58 and 59, that we should let the oppressed go free, that we should undo the heavy burdens. Uh, this is all done by covenant, by, by our motives being purified by Torah, and therefore discerning that love is the covenant. Love, it's about love. And love is a sacrificial love. Covenant love is sacrificial. You lay down your life for somebody else. You lay down your own opinions. You lay down your own thoughts. You lay down your own agenda. To build a bridge, to become the repairer of the breach, that you might restore others to what? Into covenant. Now, understanding that you enter into covenant, um, there needs to we need to redefine the responsibility of becoming a believer in Yeshua. Because to say the prayer that we make confession uh, and believe in what Yeshua did for us, it's important that each disciple, when they make that prayer of confession, that they understand the, the covenant that they are making with through the blood of Yeshua. They come back to Yahuwah and early stages of discipleship need to really assist that person to know that they have returned to Yahuwah through the blood of Yeshua and I, I personally believe that the blood of Yeshua was shed for our sins done in ignorance. Yeshua himself proclaimed, repent, make teshuvah, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He didn't say, don't worry, I'm going to die for you. All you've got to do is receive me and then your sins will be forgiven. He didn't say that. Uh, and that's because all offerings made in the Mishkan had an element of forgiveness of sin there were sin offerings specific sin offerings but there were also thank offerings peace offerings there were many different kinds of offerings but most of them had an element or in them of forgiveness of sin of the person making the offering uh, and the sin was uh, the sins done in ignorance now ignorance means that you either don't know you're doing them or you are doing them, but you don't know why you're doing them. You don't know how to stop doing them. And uh, uh, and obviously there, there are problems. So, you know, ignorance does span quite a, a lot of uh, our sin. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, we do need to realize that sins that we know about, we are told to repent of, not uh, the, 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 once we know the sin, we are obligated to repent of that sin not just say, well, Yeshua's shed his blood for us, so I'm okay. Um, although there is an element of truth in that, in that where, where sin abounds, grace does abound much more. But the purpose of grace abounding much more is that we see that love wins the day. And that's part of the covenant that the blood of Yeshua causes us to win the day in the end. Uh, so that we do actually repent. But um, once we have our, the righteousness that we have is not our own, it's his righteousness because of what he has done for us. And uh, he wins our hearts that way. And we are able to keep covenant, therefore, from that time onwards. So keeping covenant is not only about what we do, but covenant is about what we don't do in that uh, we see in the example of Yeshua that it says in Isaiah 53 there, it says that 
he opened not his mouth like a sheep before its shearers is dumb he kept quiet and this was an amazing an amazing amazing part of what Yeshua did before he went to the cross he was tested he was tried by men falsely accused and uh, plotted against but he opened not his mouth in defense because that would have broken covenant with his father uh, because his heart was pure his heart was perfect and he only ever opened his mouth when it was relevant to point out to others um, that they needed to fear Yahuwah as well such as Pontius Pilate when he said do you not realize that I have the power to release you or kill you and Yeshua replied my father in heaven has given you this and he, he uh, uh, otherwise you wouldn't have it so the absolute trust and the absolute covenant keeping love between himself and Yahuwah was very prevalent all the way and that uh, Yeshua was not prepared to answer to these men and he could have called legions of, legions of angels he could have done all sorts of things but he was submitted to the will of Yahuwah in covenant to fulfill what needed to be done as a perfect offering there was an offering acceptable to Yahuwah that he would become the first of many brethren and he said that if you are not prepared to take up your cross and follow me then you're not worthy to be called my Talmud my 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 disciple <clears throat> because he said that if if they hated me they will hate you so following Yeshua and seeing what happened to him is pretty much par for the course of what will happen to us as we deepen our walk as we stand more in truth as covenant is developed and developed uh, more definely more purely more succinctly into the will of Yahuwah and but also it says Yeshua said you will do greater things than I because I go to be with the Father so it's greatly expanded as to uh, um, what we can do as well now we know that there have been covenant changes in the spirit in that uh, Yeshua went into the Holy of Holies in the Shemaim in the heavens there and became both the high priest and the lamb and uh, he he is there living constantly making intercession the memorial in heaven are the holes in his hands and his feet and in his side of the sacrifice that he spent for us to shed the blood of the covenant that we would return not by our own deeds and not by our own righteousness but by his example and that we make covenant with him and return it's it's quite a solemn thing to return to Yahuwah uh, we know that there are many happy clappy type congregations but the book of Acts is very clear and it says it is with much suffering that we enter the kingdom of heaven uh, you know really is not a joy ride if we're really dealing with our sin and we want to live a righteous life it's not a joy it's not a joy ride all the time a lot of the time it isn't a joy ride it's those who sow with tears reap with joy uh, and um, that's part of cutting the covenant because 
we're called to be circumcised of heart, to have the Torah inscribed in our hearts, which is likened unto the cutting of a covenant in our hearts. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the basics of covenant and maybe build it up a little bit. When you make covenant with somebody, the covenant that you make is not based on your own thinking. So it's not based on your own emotions. It's not based on your own uh, philosophies or your own doctrines. Covenant is based on Torah, upon the scriptures. So if we begin with the fact that you make a covenant, let's let's say you, you begin by making a commitment to to that covenant. That doesn't mean that you're perfect in it, but you have committed into a relationship that is agreed to work out the covenant. So I believe the commitment is the the first step that you agree to commit to each other to work out a covenant relationship. Now, obviously, that's man and wife, but it can be friends too. It can be congregations covenanting with other congregations. That there's a commitment there that we will commit to work out our calling and our covenant together. Now, if we believe that that calling to be in covenant with each other is sent by Yahuwah, then it has to be sat down with the leaders and the elders there uh, to discuss through, well, how does that, let's say, let's say you've got a congregation uh, in City A and there's a congregation in City B, which is just 100 miles away from each other, and you decide to covenant together. <coughs> so you are, this is more than just an affiliation. This is more than an alliance. You are covenanted to each other. And this is something that could be deeply profound, uh, as, but it has to be led of Yahuwah, uh, that the timing is right, that the understanding is there, and that we are allowing Yahuwah to unfold the relationship that he wants these two congregations to have, just using that as an example. Um, a very powerful thing can be an incredibly powerful thing, particularly in the world that we live in, because it's a, a democratic world. So the bigger the congregation, you know, the more voting power uh, and the more the more powerful it's it's seen as being. Uh, and yet, uh, with Yahuwah, it's not the size of things uh, that 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 he needs. It's the faithfulness of those that he has, whether that's a lot of people or, or not. But we start with commitment. And then we uh, begin to, in the relationship, begin to find out, you know, the areas that need help. And then we covenant with each other to uh, undo the heavy yokes, let the oppressed go free, do away with the pointing of the finger, that we work out remembering that the goal of our covenant is to have true fellowship, is to love each other. That's the goal of our faith, is to love. Make love your aim. That's what the scriptures say. So what are the benefits of, let's say, two congregations, you know, uh, covenanting together? Let's say you have you have one congregation made up of five families. Those, fa those five families are in covenant with each other. They've developed into that stage. Please, God, such a thing should happen. I don't believe in messianic congregations or churches. I believe in covenant joined groups, that they understand the covenant, that they're committed to working it out. And and as that gets worked out, so let's say you've got five families in one congregation making up a congregation, a community, and you have, say, seven in, in the other one down the road, and they covenant with each other. Now, the important thing is that you develop relationships that are earnest, that uh, there is a transparency within the leaders, 
that righteousness is the culture, uh, that politics is not the culture, righteousness is the culture, and that you have true and honest judges within the congregations for situations that are bound to show up. But if somebody um, has is politicking there, it's not going to work, and that's going to break covenant. Politics break covenant always. Um, they they for, for for all the reasons that that we can all think of so easily here. You know the selfishness, the uh, prejudice, the bias, uh, the the failure to recognise true true people for the right job um, because. Uh, uh, because it's politics, because, uh, you know, p people are trying to get their own way, and that's corruption. That's why all politics basically leads to corruption. But if you are able to join two communities together into one community by covenant, then the teaching of covenant needs to be persistent, which is the teaching of righteousness, uh, in, in every aspect of relationship, the teaching of accountability to each other um, and the development of righteous families. Of course, the benefits of having those numbers are that it's easier to find wives for your sons, husbands for your daughters. Uh, it's easier to have a, a culture of righteous friendships for your children when they're young, and righteous schooling. Um, and to have the resources to raise up a righteous community uh, under Yahuwah. Um, so, but if it's not done in covenant, then we're in danger of just becoming another denomination uh, or a, a another people group. Um, and any politics, if it's if it's not weeded out, you see, this was the, the issue. In scriptures is that the judges were raised up by Yahuwah but when there was not a righteous judge Israel fell away Israel just fell away without a true righteous king without the true righteous judge without true righteous prophets covenant will not work on a larger scale because the covenant is based on being refinedly righteous um, so that there's a standard that has been raised up that is that is kept. Now in Israel, uh, you could, if you had disputes, you could appeal even to the king of Israel himself to judge your case, and that's why we know the story of the two prostitutes who uh, one lost a baby, and Solomon said, right, cut the baby in half, and the woman said, no, no, let her keep her. And Solomon said, yeah, that must be her mother, so give the baby back to her. And, and, and there it was revealed that, you know, the, uh, right there you have a, a, um, a, a case that was being judged by King Solomon himself. So if people are truly looking for righteousness, they should have access to uh, the most righteous people in the communities. But first you need a righteous family. The righteous family makes covenant with others. And they cut the covenant between them. They work it out between them. It's not easy. There's going to be fallings out. There's going to be disagreements because none of us are perfect. But we work towards it. We work towards it all the time. We build trust. It takes years. It takes time. Uh, but we build and we build and we build without this um, putting people on a pedestal. It's got nothing really to do with people. At the end of the day, uh, a congregation is really getting it together. A community is really getting it together does not have this kind of uh, um, googly eyes towards their leader of, of, of that they're like a celebrity uh, everything should be done in the rest and the peace of Yahuwah and giving the glory to him uh, if if our people are putting us up on a pedestal as a celebrity then I'm telling you there's something wrong with us there is something wrong with the leader if uh, they're being bigged up in that way because a true leadership directs his people to glorify Yahuwah, not to reverence the leader as though he's the only one with access. So just to reiterate a psalm scripture that I mentioned earlier, upon this one will I look. 
he who swears to his own hurt, he who kills a bull as if he were killing a man, he who is contrite of heart. Contrition is the one that, uh, someone who is contrite, yielded, given over to Yahuwah. He's made covenant. And covenant really is making your ref making Yahuwah your refuge. That's it says that the, the name of the Lord, the name of Yahuwah, is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, run into the name, and they are safe. You know, I think there's something wrong when people are always um, almost hyperly saying, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, in the name. If you are in the name, because he is the Lord, your refuge, then you don't need to keep saying in the name of, in the name of, because you just are in the name of. Uh, and, um, and those who are in the name of Yahuwah are in covenant with him. Now we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of Torah and being able to receive those words, those words are covenantal. They are covenantal. And Yahuwah has a covenant with the earth. He, he made the heavens and the earth. And he has a covenant. And But that covenant is being broken every day. Men are thinking their own thoughts and doing their own, th and, and acting out their own thoughts on a daily basis which is uh, the number six is the number for man, why the Antichrist is called, uh, his number is 666, which is the emphasis of man, man, man. That it's, uh, you know, that the stamp of the three witnesses against Yahuwah, man, man, man. Uh, but those who restore Street, the, become the restorer of streets to dwell in, restorer of uh, repairers of the breach. They are people who know Yahuwah and who have made covenant. Covenant is a tremendous safeguard in relationships. Uh, if people break covenant and they do, they can still be restored through forgiveness, forgiveness. Uh, but the principles of uh, restitution are important. Public repentance, stating that you've sinned, but you want to return. And but the Torah gives us the guidelines for for restoration in in that way as well. So just to define uh, a people who are walking in covenant. We see that after the generation that refused to receive Yahuwah's victory in going into Canaan and to take it as their promised land, covenant promised land, uh, that when they'd fallen, when they, they had died off, the generation that had hardened their heart in that way had died off, that Yahuwah was now in a position to begin to bring his people uh, across the Jordan and into the land to begin to start taking the land of their inheritance, a land of their covenant with Yahuwah, uh, because they could now hear his voice and do all the silly things that Yahuwah would make them do, like marching around a city seven times and then blowing a horn. Uh, he, they would do all those things in simple obedience, and then Yahuwah would fight for them. So we see that a people who are given over to the covenant and do not have the blocks and the baggage that many of us have can fulfill and do great exploits. And it's by cutting the covenant, covenant. It's by returning and returning and returning and returning and returning. So really just to finalize this chat this evening about covenant is 
When we make a commitment to Yahuwah in covenant, we're making a commitment to return to the conditions, the terms and the conditions of the covenant of Torah. And we're commanded there to study it, and think about it day and night, so that we know it, so that we understand it, and so that we can walk within it, so that we can walk in the blessings of it and not be trapped by the thinking of our own hearts, which is always self-centered and idolatry. So my prayer and my hope is that this little talk will help you to reconsider your life and to recommit yourself to covenant. Lord, I want to make a covenant with you. I want to return to the covenant. I want to take it much more seriously. And I want to take every single word of scripture and apply it to my relationship with you by and in covenant. I want to take my relationship much more seriously with you to remember that it is a covenant. That I, this isn't just a philosophy or a way of life. This is, this is a, it is a way of life, but it's a covenant way of life. It's a marriage. We remember that the children of Israel, when Moses spoke to them all the words of the Torah, they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. And that's the commitment. And that is going to be reflected by confession, constant confession each day, searching your heart each day, uh, and seeking the love of the Father, and submitting your heart, to the love of the Father to direct you and give you counsel and lead you to understanding the covenant that he's made that you may indeed be uh, of the bride of Messiah that of course you know the bride is going to marry Yeshua by covenant in the new covenant in the Barit Hadashah so let's be of, let's be of good cheer and in this let's return to covenant let's return and and uh, maybe some of you would like to pray this prayer with me dear yahuwah i return to you i return to covenant i realize that you have called me to keep this covenant and i make a pledge to return to you now that everything that's in this covenant made with the children of Israel, made with the world via the children of Israel, that I would keep and live in, that I might walk in every word that's in this covenant, that I might walk in the power of your might that comes through the keeping of this covenant. Pray for more wisdom and understanding of how I personally can come back to you Come back to the covenant and be more faithful because covenant, understanding covenant, makes you much more faithful. Amen. Thank you for joining me this evening. I hope some of this has been useful. And again, want to encourage you to encourage us guys who are teaching on Friday night uh, just to say, yeah, that was a great job. And thank you uh, to Mosh and to Rob and to me, Phil, um, God bless you. Shabbat Shalom.